what was your uh, treatment? How did people treat you? Exactly when they, the same way. Same way. They no, parted. They, they, they parted the way for they you. They parted the way for me. There was a mask um, nurse in front of me, and he was like going five meters ahead. and was like, stop. Don't, don't go near her. Mm. Go by this way. I felt so, you know, isolated. Well, at least you had space. Yeah, had space to walk and <laughs> talk but people were staring at me, like, yep. the shape of something fresh. I thought when you went home, like, your neighbours and all that, did nah. they know? No, I don't really have, like, close neighbours, mm -hmm. so they didn't know. How about, didn't like, find out I mean, when you, when you, now, even now, uh, like, you've now, obviously recovered. Yes, I have. Are people still treating you differently? Well, when I first came like, out, when I first announced that I had recovered, some people were still quite, you know, oh, are you sure you've recovered? If I come to you, will I get it? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm scared of you, man. Mm -hmm. But now... Maybe they just don't like you. <laughs> no, come on. She's a nice girl. <laughs> no. Um, so, Dr. Tan, what should we do now? Really? Well, what is, what's the next step? What, what, does, what does Singapore have to do? Uh, well, at this point in time, we are in the transition phase. The reason uh, towards mitigation phase, because from the surveillance of the influenza uh, that is being picked up by the MOH clinics, is that currently now uh, H1N1 is affecting about 5% of all the viral cases, and it's 1 in 20, okay? Mm. So it's, and they expect it to increase over time, okay? And once it goes to about uh, 15%, that's being uh, announced publicly by the Minister of Health and the Director of Medical Services, we will move into what you call the mitigation phase. And in this case, basically, it's, uh, it's basically entrenched in, yeah. as part of the flu strand here. Yeah. So what we will do during this phase of time is to identify high-risk patients, okay? okay? Because the problem is that we have limited bits yeah. that can be used for isolation, yeah. and we can't give the bits. I mean, in early days, we can give the bits to um, healthy, um, mm. fairly healthy patients, but mm. after a while, if we admit every patient, we run out of bits. So yeah. we have to sort of uh, rationalize the resource, mm -hmm. and mm. we don't know how long this thing will take. Yeah. You know? So that's why from the ground itself, um, it's basically, as a Singaporean, is to recognize that you have flu to start off with. Yes. Okay? Don't pretend if you have running nose, cough, fever, don't, don't pretend that um, it's nothing, you know, mm. because you may have contact with somebody else. Mm. See a GP. Mm -hmm. If you want to sell Medicaid, you can sell Medicaid for a while, but don't get well with see a GP. Yeah. Because uh, the GP can recognize and actually offer... Um, the Tamiflu for you, mm. and in fact, up to this point in time, the testing for H1N1, you know, for yeah. example, it's uh, not to be done for all patients anymore, right. you know, and we've been told that we'll be basically offered the test uh, at the hospitals. In fact, the test is only offered in the, the government hospitals to their staff, yeah. okay, obviously, because they come in contact with patients, if they fall sick, they need to be tested. Yeah. They'll be tested for uh, tourists who mm. come in transit in Singapore, because they may need to have a clean bill of health before they can travel yep. to the next country. Yep. Um, patients who have year four, you come in contact with someone who has confirmed HIV one the test. What, what happens if I want to go in as, as just myself? And you I, can I do that. You can do that. You just walk in. You can ask the GP to refer you to the hospital. You just walk in to and say, I, want to, I think I have something. Then you have to pay about two hundred fourteen dollars, okay. and they'll take a swab from your nose or your throat, cool. and you wait for two, a day for. So results. all this is like you know prevention. Right? You know you don't want to get it. Mm -hmm. How yeah. about the mindset of hey, let's get it? Uh, you've heard of the H one N one parties happening in Australia. Um, is that a good idea? Does does getting H one N one improve your immunity? Well, I as a doctor, I don't encourage that. Okay, I mean right. if you want to do that, it's your own. Um, you choose to do it yourself, you put yourself to, to, to be exposed. And the most important thing is if you fall sick, you must know and go and get treated as soon as Straight you can. Because mm -hmm. I'm having a birthday party. There'll be tons of people there. I'll just call it a H1N1 party. I think you've got more courage than I do. Uh, Jenny, at your place, has anyone tried this? Um, H1N1 party? Yeah. How would you feel if you found out, if you found out someone was going to do this? Party? Oh, uh, uh, like maybe call the police or something. You know, but it's not illegal. I know, I know. It's, it's not illegal. illegal. All the people hold chicken pox. People hold chicken pox parties. 
Yeah, I, I mean, the thing is that, I mean, like, like what he says, you know, the doctor says that, you know, you must be responsible if you get it. I mean, it's your own business if you want to get H1N1, like the chicken pox party yeah. that people have. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that, um, yeah, but I just feel that, you know, people are just so relaxed about this situation. We talk about the second wave coming. Yeah. We do not know when the second wave is going to come. So, are you going to... Yeah, I don't because know. we forget to say, even though if you do have exposed to the party, you may not fall sick, you know. Yeah. You may be still a carrier, carrier and, you're and not then you sick. spread to somebody else who you don't tell him you've been to a flu party and he falls really sick, then what happens? Is it? Just, just very quickly before we round off, there is one thing I do want to ask you. Um, and that is, there are a lot of people out there talking about a person in Denmark, another one in Hong Kong and another one in Japan, mm. who are supposed to have, as, as, as Jenny put it, the second wave. Is this true? No, they don't have a second wave. In fact, they don't have the second strain. What they have is a Tamiflu resistant virus. Okay? Okay. So the virus is still the same, except that these patients have been, um, have their swab taken and they found the virus has been resistant to the dominant me medicine that's given out now, which is Tamiflu. Fortunately, the, they can be treated with the other medicine, which is Relenza. So, right. um, but of course, as what WHO has mentioned this morning, uh, yesterday, is that they are basically trying to ask the countries to stop testing everyone but monitor for trends because they, and also to try to analyze the virus to see if the second strand does happen. All right. So cool. in the meantime, all this time has gone by, research has been done, but it still comes down to personal hygiene. That's the best way, that's the best thing we can do to Until to the vaccine safe. comes out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you've got a video yes, about we do. personal hygiene. Yes, uh, it, it's really worth watching. Take a look at this. This is from Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Good old Mr. Brown. I don't want you to touch me, baby. <laughs> Good toilet. Now wash hand right. When you wash your body, wash your hands too. When you wash your body, wash your hands too. You don't want to get swine flu or someone pass through you. You better wash your body, your body, your body. H1N1 is calling for no fun Be careful where you go, US or Mexico If you have temperature, that means you got fever Don't just stick the honey, this flu is not funny Maybe it's time to wear a mask Ooh. Maybe you have forgotten SARS Ooh. Whatever the weather, but springtime or meter Stick it in your armpit or down there when you wash your body, wash your hands too. When you wash your body, wash your hands too. Though the level is yellow, so you need to go to the right. You better wash your body, your body, your body. When you wash your body, wash your hands too. When you wash your body, wash your hands too. Must wash up the poop. Or jokes will stick to you Watch more than your body Your body, your body I know you use finger Don't let the smell linger I know you dig that's, gold And wipe on some pole Stretch your backside yeah. Okay, okay guys, I, I, I think we got, we got the idea yeah. Although I do challenge TV and radio to put this out as a commercial because I think it's fabulous. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Until he gets to the finger bit because that's, that just blows me right there. Okay, we're out of time. We're out of time. What have you brought back from this discussion today? What have I brought back from this discussion today? I think my personal feel, my personal feel is we just need to be a lot more careful. Mm -hmm. um, after listening to Audrey, I don't think we're going to stop the youth from gathering in big groups. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to live with that. But you guys are going to have to be a lot more careful. Uh, parents like yourself and myself, we've just got to be, we've got to watch out, but we can't get paranoid, right. really. Um, it, it's, it's in your hands. It's in nobody else's hands. It's in your hands. I'd like to see less coverage of, like, you know, this in the media. A little less, you know, panic-inducing sort of stories, mm. you know what I mean? It's, and... You know, but unfortunately, you can't write about Michael Jackson's death for too long. No, I'm getting a little nothing tired else to write about. One too. Exactly, but thank you very much for joining us, people. Thank, thank you. you very much. That's it for this webisode of Blog TV. Catch us live on TV Channel News Asia on August the 13th. Till then, goodbye. He's pinned. Yeah. He did it again. I'm the Flying Dutchman. Take care. See ya.